today, I'm gonna to teach you how to use high-speed sync on your camera to take dramatic photographs in bright sunlight. Hi, I'm Brian, and today I'm gonna to show you how to use high-speed sync on your camera, and we're gonna use Sony cameras, we're gonna use Godox flashes, we're gonna use softboxes, we're gonna show you the difference between natural light, high-speed sync flash, and regular sync flash. Let's get to it. our beautiful model Derica and we're going to talk about high speed sync, natural light and regular sync flash. The first thing I want to do is explain what high speed sync is for. What high speed sync does is most cameras and this dates back way 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 back have a maximum shutter speed that they can go to. Sandbags, they're a good thing to have. Cameras have a maximum shutter speed that they can sync with a flash, okay? And usually it was, I mean, back in the old days, it was like 1 1 25th of a second, 1 1 60th. Today's cameras, it's 1 200th, 1 I'm using a Sony a7 III that happens to have a 1 250th of a second sync speed. What that means is that's the fastest shutter that I can use with flash without having partial black frames, right? Nobody likes that, it doesn't look good in photos. But if you've ever seen that, that's why the shutter speed was set too high for the sync of the flash. Well, along comes high speed sync. Now what that does is it lets the flash be a much shorter duration so that you can work with those shutters a lot better and you can use much faster shutter speeds. My camera goes to one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed and I can shoot at that with these, cam with these flashes and sync to it without getting any black frames. Now, that does come with a cost. The cost is a little bit lower output and in some cases a lot lower output. What we're going to do though is show you a natural light photo, then we're going to do a regular sync flash photo, then we're going to do a high speed sync flash photo, and I'll put them together and show them on the screen so you can see what these look like and I'll show you the differences. All right? And then afterwards, we're going to talk about all the stuff that we use today to be able to produce these photographs. So here we go. So first shot, natural light. I am using, by the way, a Zeiss Battis 85 1.8. They should call these the badass lens because that's what they are. I'm just going to expose for her face and what I have is ISO 100 f 1.8, 200th of a second and bam. I'm just trying to get her face to look as properly exposed as possible. I actually stopped it down to 1 1 60th of a second. Take three shots just, for, just to be safe. Now let's look at this photo for a second. What you see is Derica looks fantastic. The background, not so much, okay? This is natural light. This is that light and airy thing. I'm not even gonna get into that. But what I'm seeing is blown out skies and things like that. That doesn't look so good. There's a lot of hot spots in that background. This is not what we want. We chose this spot on purpose because it's a pretty indicative spot of where a lot of people would shoot. It's really pretty. And uh, you know, you can get a lot of beautiful shots here, but there's a lot of problem areas that we wanna be able to deal with. So in comes, flash. So we have in here our Godox 8200 and a Godox, I forget what size softbox. I don't know. It'll probably be in a comment below because I can't remember. And I have that there set to light her up. Now I'm using a softbox to get the best softest light possible. If you don't have a softbox, use an umbrella. If you don't have an umbrella, any kind of modifier will help. If you don't have a modifier at all, it's okay. You can use that too. The light will just be a little bit harsher, but it'll still work. You can also use an on-camera flash if you need to. They just don't have as much power as the AD200 does. Okay, so let's give this a try. So my next shot, I'm gonna expose for that background this time instead of exposing for her face. And what I wanna do is make sure that that background goes nice and dark. And for me, that went to 1 800th of a second. But you know what? I can't do that because I'm using regular sync. So I gotta stop back to 250 and crank down that aperture until I get it looking about the way I want it. Now, I don't have any real sky showing in this, so I'm gonna go with F4. Then I'm gonna turn my flash on. Notice what I did there. I set an exposure for the background. I completely ignored Derica standing in front of it. I wanted that background to look just right. Now, I have my flash 
turned on and I'm gonna go to half power because I think that's all we really need for this shot. Keep in mind too, one thing, you wanna shoot this in manual. You will probably not be able to do this in any of the automatic modes at all. Okay, Derek, are you ready? There she is, she's smiling and bam, there's our flash. And the exposure's pretty good. I think I'm gonna tone that down just a little bit more. I think that flash is just a little too high. So I'm gonna go to fourth power on the flash. Now keep in mind I'm at 1 250th of a second, F4, ISO 100. Let me just take a quick look. Oh, the flash didn't fire on the last one. There it is, that's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna pull that picture up for you so you can see it. I'm gonna show Derek what she looks like. She's so cute. Now, what you see in that one is a properly exposed background, no blown highlights. It's a little brighter than I might want. I could have gone down to just a touch more. But what you do see is it's sharp. That background is kind of sharp. She's not separated from the background a lot. And I paid a lot of money for this lens. It's a 1.8. I want to shoot it at 1.8. But it's too bright. In comes high speed sync. Now I'm going to enable high speed sync mode and I'm going to crank that back down to F1.8. Come back over to my spot. Derek is going to pose for me. Now, I know one thing, because I'm going to be using high speed sync mode, the flash is going to put out less power. So I'm going to go to full power on my flash. And the same idea, I'm going to crank that background down until it's the way I want it. And I'm at 12, 1, 1 12 50th of a second shutter speed now. Turn my flash back on and boom. There we have it. Let me just get one more. Somebody blinked. It was me. Okay, so when you look at this picture now, so what you see now when you look at that, that is that nice creamy background, that bokeh that I actually paid for is all coming through. So that background separates her from it just beautifully and we don't have anything blown out. Okay, some things to talk about here too. I'm using Sony mirrorless and I believe this is true for a lot of mirrorless cameras and especially when you're using Godox flash. When you get to over a thousandth of a second sync speed, you'll get banding. Um, usually it's horizontal, but if you're holding the camera vertically, obviously it'll show up vertically. The way to correct that is, it is your E front curtain shut. <laughs> yeah, gotta love Sony's menu system. It means electronic front curtain shutter. What that does is in normal shooting, it actually prevents the, the mirror slap effect that we used to get with DSLRs. It doesn't happen in mirrorless anymore because there's no mirror but it does prevent that extra little bit of camera shake and jar. But when you get higher in the frequencies and higher in shutter speeds, it does cause banding. Don't really know why it doesn't happen on the A9, but it does happen on the A7 III. So you just turn that off. Anytime I'm shooting over a thousandth of a second, I just shut it off. Now, we, we're using a lot of stuff out here today. We probably should go back to the table and show you what some of this equipment is because there's a couple things that I want to talk about that'll actually help a lot when you're doing these kind of things. So let's check out the gear. All right, so some of the gear that we use to do this I actually really love Godox flashes. No, they don't sponsor me, but I wish they would. Um, also, we switched from Canon to Sony fairly recently. We did, I did do a video on that, but I wanted to talk a little bit about what we use today. Now, you can get transmitters, okay, that'll work to do these. You can use pocket wizards if you really want to. There's all kinds of transmitters out there today. I'm actually using the Godox V862 flash, and I love it because of the Li-ion battery, or Li-ion, however you say that. It lasts all day and then some. I can shoot a whole wedding, still have half a charge left. And I put that on my camera because A, it is a flash already, and B, it works just as good as a transmitter. There's a mode on here that you just go bam, and it's all there. Now, on my camera, I'm using a Sony a7 III, and I have one of my favorite lenses of all time, the Zeiss Battis 85 1.8. This is a phenomenal lens. I went back and forth between the three different 85s and chose this one. The main reason I chose it is because of its autofocus speed in low light. For me, that's super critical, being a wedding photographer. We also have the MagMod system. You probably see it, the little rubber thing on top of this. I didn't use any of that stuff today, but it's great to add gels and grids and all kinds of other toys. The uh, MagSphere is a popular thing that we'll do. If I'm using just this flash instead of the 8200, I'll often put a MagSphere on it. 
but we, that's another video yeah we also used to put the mag sphere on the ad 200 until recently but let's just rip this thing off and take a look at what's inside go ahead so what we have is the godox uh soft box it works like a brawly box it's great you just put it out like an umbrella it has a white screen on it let's turn this around so they can see just spin this. oh there you go and it's got a silver lining so it actually puts out a lot of power it preserves a lot of what's on here and it folds up really nice and neat we just carry a little bag with a couple of portable stands these stands are super cheap and super lightweight but they get the job done throw a sandbag on it it's not blowing over that's the advantage of using a light like the 8200. It's really small and really light and very portable. We actually just keep these in a very small camera bag and all their accessories. Speaking of accessories, one of the things that we just recently purchased is this round head. They come with the square fre Fresnel, Fresnel, however you pronounce that. I've never had to say it out loud. I just know what it is. And a bear bulb. I don't like the bear bulb for travel because it could break, it could pop off. It's just not that easy. This round head though, solved all those problems and well guess what it looks like godox is going after magmod for accessories it just pops right on i love this that's a bare bulb right there there's also a wide angle diffuser and there's gels and there's other stuff but that's another video but it's all the stuff she's holding right there but this is the ad 200 they also make a 400 which is much much larger and they make a 600 which is even larger the beauty of the godox system is all of these things work together I can control all those flashes on different channels at different powers, even some in TTL and some in um, manual mode. Yeah, manual. Words. And I can control all that from my camera without having to go over there and touch a thing. I can turn on and off high speed sync. It's just awesome. We, uh, we have what, like seven or eight of the V860s now, and we have two of these, and I, I'd love to have more. I just can't find a practical reason to let my wife let me buy more. So. Hopefully you got something out of this video today and uh, thanks for watching. Okay, so today we're here with our beautiful model Derica, which just happens, happens to be... Today we're here with our beautiful model... There's bloopers. Yeah, awesome.